Hi everyone, I just took Andrew Huang's music production class on LearnMonthly.com, and I'm here to tell you about it. In case you don't know, Andrew Huang is a music producer and YouTuber with over 2 million subscribers, shown here, and he makes super wacky tracks like this one. I'm gonna climb to the top of Sparkle Mountain. So yeah, go check it out. Uh, Andrew has made a month-long accelerated course on music production where you create and fully produce three finished songs, each following a different theme. The first one is a fully electronic track, the second one uses samples from sound effects in your environment, and the third uses live recorded instruments and vocals, plus any of the topics from the first two tracks. Uh, upon completing the course, there's a final optional assignment to create a video review or testimonial for the course, and that's where this is. But when I was deciding on whether to take the course or not, it was these videos that were the deciding factor for me. So I thought I'd continue the trend, as well as use this as an opportunity to get more exposure for my music uh, that I created uh, from the course. If you want to just skip right to the music, I've linked to them in the description below, and I've also uploaded them separately. Uh, I was overall very happy with the final tracks that I produced, and this course has motivated me to be more proactive with my music. Previously, work and life kept getting in the way, and I would have song ideas just sit and fester in my mind for years at a time. Uh, this class took a lot of hard work in just a short period of time, and put a lot of external pressure to perform, and seemingly that pressure was exactly what I needed to get things done. Uh, however, the tight timelines of this class aren't for everyone. Uh, the class breaks you up into peer groups of 20 to 30-ish people, uh, and you're required to provide feedback on a few of your classmates' work on periodic updates. Seemingly, not everyone was able to keep up, unfortunately. From my own experiences, everyone seemed to do really well on track one, uh, but maybe due to the newness of using sampling for uh, a track, a lot of people seem to get a little discouraged with track two. Uh, by the time track three came around, some people didn't even finish. Uh, so for sure, the tight timeline isn't for the faint of heart, but if you think you can manage it, this class was a really rewarding experience. A little bit about my background and how that may relate to you in, in order to, to give you the information you need as far as whether you want to take this class or not. Uh, I grew up with music. I play six musical instruments, including piano, guitar, and a few others. I know how to read sheet music. I played in my school band for years. I'm mostly self-taught for music theory and composition. Um, I'm not a professional musician. Uh, this is just a hobby of mine. Uh, I've recorded my own original songs before, but I sensed that there were some things that were missing from my arsenal, and I wanted to correct that. After taking this course, I found that my intuition was correct, and there were certainly some useful things that I didn't know yet. But at the same time, I also realized that I knew more than I thought I did. So that was very reassuring. From what I gathered, I got the sense that some of my classmates had more experience with music production than I did, and others had less experience. Several people were able to give me useful, detailed feedback on my songs, and likewise, I was able to give constructive feedback to others. This was hugely beneficial to me. In the past, I would usually ask friends and family for feedback on my songs, and most of the time, they couldn't give me anything concrete. Uh, as a result, I didn't really know how good I was. When I started this class, I kind of had imposter syndrome at first, and when my classmates gave me compliments, I didn't believe it at first. I thought, nah, they don't know what they're talking about. But those people always had great songs of their own, so obviously I was better than I thought, and having this peer environment for this class made it a lot easier for me to come by that information. So the class was a lot of work, but I would definitely recommend the class to anyone who thinks they can handle it. And, you know, among your classmates, I found that it's not really about competition, at all times, you should be thinking about how to get the most out of the class and how you can grow personally in your skills and knowledge. <clears throat> so I wanted to share with you all the songs that I created during the course, as well as share with you my process for coming up with my initial ideas and what the songs mean to me, and as well as the strategies that I used to tackle these assignments in the short time frame that I had. Uh, so track one was supposed to be entirely electronic, but I cheated. I recorded guitar and bass as well. Uh, but I think that's okay, because the point of the assignment was to get acquainted with using MIDI, uh, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface, in a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation. Uh, I accomplished this, I used 
Andrew's recommendation of Ableton Live as my DAW, and I used a keyboard MIDI controller, which I bought specifically for this course. When I had my first ideas for the song, initially I thought of kind of a modern jazz thing with a, with a horn line, but it ended up being more like symphonic rock. So it goes to show that your vision doesn't always work out the way you intend, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, once I laid the horn line down, it reminded me of the classical piece Mars by Gustav Holst in his Planet Suite. So I ended up using this kind of space theme for the track, uh, and therefore my final title for the track uh, is Cosmic War. Uh, I only made audio for the track initially, so I went back and created a visualization to go along with it with a software that I found online. Uh, so hopefully it's not too flashy. So, you know, focus more on the music than the visualization. Um, so here we go. This is Cosmic War. <laughs>
on to track two. I thought this was a really cool project. Uh, creating my own samples was not something that I ever thought I'd be doing in my music, and I was very pleasantly surprised by the results. Andrew recommended that we make our samples from kitchen sounds, such as hitting pots and pans, sharpening knives, running faucet water, turning on a stove burner, and so on and so forth. I didn't use any of those. I already had my idea for this track before the class even started. Um, and so therefore I should mention that uh, there was some homework in the week leading up to the first week of class, and so it definitely pays to sign up early if you can. Uh, included among those assignments, uh, I was watching a video lecture on learning music theory in a half an hour, uh, which which definitely wasn't bad. It seemed to cover all of everything practical that you need in order to really get started with your own compositions. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I had my idea before the class started. One of the things bringing me joy during this pandemic has been ordering things online, and you know that moment when you right when you open them is. Uh, you know, that's a lot of fun. So I saved some giant bubble wrap so, from some of my packages solely for the purpose of using them in this song. Uh, so let me get that real quick. Uh, so here's some of the bubble wrap that I use. Uh, and so if you just shake it, I mean, it sounds can kind of sound sort of like uh, maracas, right? Let me... Kind of. I mean, it sounds better in my track. You'll see. Um, now, if you pop one of these bubbles, so this was a staple that I used in my track. Uh, I snap my fingers to mimic snare rim hits. Uh, now let me get something real quick. So, I used these loose dumbbell weights to grate them together like this. Wait a minute. Uh, and I thought that sounded kind of like a gyro. Uh, and so, you know, if you don't know what a gyro is, then here's a picture. Uh, and it sounds sort of like this. Um, and so it's a percussion instrument that's used in different types of Latin jazz, such as salsa, samba, or bossa nova. Um, so as you see, you, you take a little stick and you grate it over these ridges on the gyro. I also use those same weights, or I think I use bigger weights, uh, and drop them on a carpeted floor to mimic a bass drum kick. Uh, and then let's go back to the bubble wrap real quick. So, you know, if I stretch it taut like this, and I run a finger across it, and, uh, There we go. So, I mean, that's kind of an ugly sound, right? But it's a pitched sound, and so in certain DAWs, like Ableton, you can map that pitched sound to a MIDI controller with different pitches. But this sound is actually multiple tiny pitches and percussive effects, so I had to snip it down to a fraction of a second and loop it so that it's sustained. And that sound from the basis of my melody and bass for my second track. So, I don't know about you, but I thought that was really cool. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you can't even tell when you, when you, when you hear the track. There's, there's no way. Uh, and I also created another synthesizer from uh, software, uh, as, was required for, as was required for the track. Uh, so here's my second track. It's a bossa nova, and it's called Opening Packages During a Pandemic.
time for track number three. For this last track, we were required to record live instruments and vocals and write our own lyrics. Any concepts from the previous two tracks were fair game. Uh, you might say that I cheated on this one too, since I used the guitar riff that I wrote years ago. But I took this opportunity to fully flesh out that riff into a full song, and I was very happy with the results. This took a lot of work. The first two songs took me maybe about 25 hours to complete each. Uh, this one probably took upwards of 50 or 60 hours. Uh, but, you know, that's certainly not required uh, for each person. Um, I decided to use my old guitar riff because of the mood that it conveyed. Uh, the riff uses the Dorian mode centered on A, so A Dorian in the key of G major. <clears throat> We usually think of the minor scale as being sad or melancholy, but Dorian sounds a little bit different. Uh, this particular guitar riff, it didn't make me sad or depressed. To me, it sounded more like emptiness or numbness or I guess a kind of contemplative introspection. Uh, it's not sad, but it's not happy either. It's something in between or something else entirely. Uh, I immediately turned to this riff for this last song because continuing my same theme from track number two, to me at least, being in quarantine during this pandemic gives me a very similar feeling to the way I felt from that guitar riff. And therefore I felt that it was a perfect fit and I designed the entire song around that theme. And I think it turned out really well. So for this song, I, so for this song, I wrote lyrics, I recorded acoustic and electric guitars, electric bass guitar, vocals, I recorded viola, I used MIDI brass horn lines, I used uh, someone else's samples that I found online, I'll link them below, for the sound of rain and uh, draining sink water. Uh, so yeah, here's track number three, and it's titled Quarantine, uh, and unlike my past two tracks, rather than, you know, post hoc uh, visualization, I actually recorded all of my live performances for this track. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. Time. 
growling stomach Perhaps it will leave if I close my eyes But to you To get up and find I can't leave That's it. I hope you enjoyed my music, and it's my current goal to ride on the coattails of this class and continue to create new music and videos. And perhaps I can upload a new video, let's say, I don't know, once a month-ish? I mean, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And thanks for watching. <laughs>